Huge news from the NHL today. Unsigned restricted free agent Shane Pinto has been suspended 41 games for violating the league's gambling rules. The first such suspension in NHL history. To discuss this huge news, here's a hockey insider, Darren Dreger. Darren, how did this all unfold? Well, through a lot of twists and turns, Gino, this is something that the National Hockey League, the Players Association, the agent Louis Gross of Shane Pinto have been talking about and working on for several days. I mean, we've been kind of digging on this story, I would say, for a week or more, but it took all of those parties to get to this point before they could formally announce what is a precedent-setting suspension. Now, keep in mind here, the commissioner of the National Hockey League, Gary Bettman, is authorized to severely discipline for any gambling-related issues or violations, and clearly there was one in this case, but the National Hockey League also made it abundantly clear that Shane Pinto did not bet on NHL games. But there was improper gambling activity. It's been suggested that maybe another party is involved, but you're not going to get any of those involved to uh, confirm that. What I know is it was a tricky and very intricate process throughout the investigation to determine that 41 games was a sufficient number and a number that would be message sending Gino to the rest of the NHL. For his part, Pinto has apologized. He takes full responsibility for his actions and says he's looking back, looking forward to getting back with the team. From the Sen standpoint, they say they accept the league suspension and looking forward to getting Pinto back with the team. Ordinarily, Dregs, yeah. players have an opportunity to appeal suspensions, but not so in this case. Why? No, that's what's a bit unique about this. I mean, look back to earlier this week when Rasmus Anderson of the Calgary Flames appealed a four-game suspension for his charging infraction on Columbus Blue Jackets star Patrick Lyonet. That was upheld by the commissioner, Gary Bettman, in this case because all three parties were involved, specifically, I guess, two that matter the most in Marty Walsh and the National Hockey League Players Association group and Bettman and the National Hockey League. In going back and forth, they just determined that, okay, it's in the collective bargaining agreement. The violation is spelled out, so we can't have any wiggle room here. We have to send a determined message, and they've done that. And part of it was agreeing that there would be no appeal process this time around. Now, I mentioned that Pinto is a restricted free agent with the Ottawa Senators, so he doesn't even have a contract right now. Mm. What can happen, if anything, on the signing front? Well, uh, the Ottawa Senators are more likely to wait until the suspension has been lifted in January and then sign him to a contract. Maybe it's his qualifying offer, but let's just back it up here a little bit because as the NHL has acknowledged, this investigation has been ongoing for the better part of two weeks. Well, that certainly aligns with how quiet things got from both the team perspective and those in the Pinto camp specific to negotiations. But prior to this two-week investigation, there was lots of back and forth. There was amicable talk on what a contract extension might look like for Shane Pinto. Well, those offers have been rescinded, as has been reported, rescinded by the Ottawa Senators. So now it's likely in their best interest because there'll be no cap hit applied here. He doesn't have a contract to wait until January, sign him to the qualifying offer or somewhere around that offer. Doesn't have to be that and then move forward. But as you've already acknowledged here, Gino, this is important. The Ottawa Senators by no means are giving up on Shane Pinto. He's a heck of a hockey player. They'd love to have him. Can't wait to get him back. So they're looking forward to getting that relationship back on track in the new year. Dregs, he can't return until near the end of January. That means he's going to miss about four months of the season. What's he do between now and then? Is he allowed to have any contact I with mean, the team to stay in shape so that when he can return, he can indeed return? Yeah, I mean, that's a little bit murky. Uh, look, he doesn't have a contract. And if he doesn't get that contract, which it's unlikely because of the cap implications, then he's probably going to have to train from afar. I mean, he's been in the Ottawa area. He's not there now, but he's been in the Ottawa area training over the last couple of weeks. Perhaps he returns, but... Shane Pinto is likely going to have to skate on his own, continue to train, and get as ready as he can be to make his NHL debut in 2024. There's no specific fine attached to this 41-game suspension to Shane Pinto, but you can't help but think this could indeed cost him millions of dollars. Hockey insider Darren Dreger.